without further ado, let me let me tell you that uh, we're very very excited today to uh, introduce Terry Bowden, our next head football coach at ULM. Coach? Scott, th thank you very much. And I, I just want to first of all say thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Barry, uh, for uh, uh, his support uh, and for the third job that he did. And Scott, uh, obviously, for the, the long conversations that we have had uh, and your aspirations for this program and my aspirations for uh, me being with this program and uh, it was so valuable to me to see two people committed to the mission of this university as well as the importance of, of college football within that framework and and I think that's that's so important. Uh, I consider myself most of all a servant coach, a coach that my job is to serve my players and to serve my faculty and my administration and to serve my community uh, and service uh, along with humility or the, or, or the or will be the the, the the focus of our staff and the personality of our staff. We may be competitive and want to win like heck, but we will do it with great class, dignity, uh, humility, and service to those young men that we that we are a part of. Um, we're going to win football games, and we're going to do everything we can. I had somebody already ask me, how long is it going to take? You know, it's going to take 60 minutes. That's how long it's, where it's going to take for us to get back in that win column, and that's what we're going to shoot for. Our standard is best, being the best in everything we can do. I mean, all you can do is to be your best in it. All we can ask you to be the very best version of you. And if you'll do that, that's all you can do. You can't be somebody else. You, can't, you don't need to be somebody else. Just be the best that you can bring to the table. And if, if every one of us are, we'll, we'll be pretty daggum good. We'll, we'll, we'll be pretty daggum good. But everybody's got to do their best. As we come out here, we're, we're, we're going to find who wants to be the best for us. Who wants to be the best at every position. You know, you ain't got to beat somebody at, at LSU. You ain't got to be better than somebody at, at Clemson or LSU. You got to be better than the guys in this room to be number one. And then we got to be better than the guys we're playing. We just got to be better than the guys in this conference we're playing. But you have to make a strong commitment to being the best you can be and being committed to that. You got to be great in the weight room. You got to be committed in the weight room, man. If you're going to be the best, it starts by getting stronger. We can win with recruitment. We got to win with recruitment by bringing in people, but we also win with de development. You've got to develop yourself into the best football player you can be, and that starts in the weight room and getting stronger. And we're committed to a we're we're committed to a great weight room program. And the great thing is, is we we've, we've been around it. We've been around it. I went to I went to Clemson for one reason after I left Aggie, just to watch and study what one of the top teams in the country is doing today how they run their weight program, how they run their strength program, how they run their academic program, every phase of it to see what I want to take with me. And it starts in the weight room. And it starts with great enthusiasm and great, and great buy-in by you and a great system to get us ready to go. I'm talking about getting the community involved and I'm talking about getting uh, more alums involved. And, and yes, our, you know, the, it's not as if we have Brinks armored trucks to take care of the foundation physically of, of all of athletics at ULM, but we can grow it. It can be done. But in order for it to, to grow, you have to have a staff and a head coach that's reaching out saying, I hear you, I need you, we want you, come be a part of it. And I know that's what Terry will do. And I know that's where he sees ULM going. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce you formally, albeit with social distancing, to the new head football coach and one that I believe will build a culture so strong that when he's done, you'll know who on his staff you want as your next head coach. Terry Bowden, ladies and gentlemen. My dad never retiring. He coached till he was 81. There's not a lot of records I could go for in my life. You know, what do you, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. a distant second or third best in my own family, so yeah. there's some humility involved there. Yeah. But what I've been blessed with is being a turnaround guy. Everywhere yeah. I've gone, 
they've been down and come back, down and come back, whether it was Auburn with two losing seasons in a row or, or Sanford with three wins in three years or Salem with one, mm-hmm. one tie or, or Akron with the 111-111. And so I've kind of gotten experience in being a turnaround coach, going mm-hmm. somewhere where uh, a program needs to get from losing to winning or somewhere to somewhere else, from the outhouse to the penthouse. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where I thought right at this point in time you all needed, and that's what I have done. And so yeah. it led me to the place that I felt like this is where my talents uh, uh, can be utilized best. And I think, mm-hmm. And it's a perfect marriage, I believe. Discipline going full speed. Got that discipline full speed, and everybody's got to be disciplined because one guy does it wrong, we all do it wrong. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. It's so important for each of y'all to understand how valuable we all are. running to the ball, old guys competing. Hey, when you eat, we all eat. I'm junior quarterback, Rhett Rodriguez, and this is my Warhawk story. Well, yeah, obviously this past year has been so abnormal and everything is kind of different. So when I put my name in the portal, the one of the difficulties would be I couldn't actually go visit schools on my own. But 
after talking to Coach Bowden, he talked to me a little bit, talked to my dad a little bit, and we said, well, we at least want to fly out to Monroe and get a feel for the city before we would really make a final decision. So we flew out here. We couldn't really tour through campus, or we could drive through campus on our own, but we couldn't go in the facility. We couldn't talk to any of the coaches. So it was really just me and him kind of exploring the city and getting a feel for everything. Yeah, obviously playing with my dad is something that was a really big benefit to it, but putting my name in the portal, I was already talking to Coach Bowden, I was already having serious talks, and then once it became maybe my dad might be able to come, then we just kind of sat down and talked about it, and we decided this is what we wanted to do, because how often are you going to get a chance to reunite and be able to play together again, because I didn't think I was going to get that chance. So I've always really valued my education. I graduated in three years in 2020 with a degree in business management. And then this past year in 2021, I got a master's in entrepreneurship. And so this past semester, I was working on my master's in entrepreneurship as well as doing a master's here in psychology. And so this past semester, I was kind of juggling both of them. This fall, I'll be doing a master's in psychology. I was trying to figure out if I could get a doctorate, um, but that'll take probably three years. And I don't know if I can really do that while I'm doing a football schedule as well, but I really value my education and that's something I really want to pursue. And I knew coming in, obviously with the new staff, with my dad coming and me coming, there's always that narrative of the coach's kid and having to juggle that. And I've dealt with that my whole life. But part of that is just working harder to show that you're really earning what's going on and that you can be a real player, a productive player. And so coming in, I really just wanted to connect with the guys, whether that's just hanging out after practice, getting lunch with them, doing those types of things. I really wanted to come and build that team chemistry because team chemistry really is what wins games. The way I look at it is I'm really like a player coach out there. I kind of view myself as the liaison between the players and the coaches. If maybe the players have a question or maybe have an um, idea for something that the program would do, but maybe they're got a little hesitate, hesitant to say it, I can kind of have that direct communication. And so I kind of have to juggle that balance between feeling like a coach and also feeling like a player. But I know that's such a unique position to be in, and I just want to embrace it. I still feel like I'm Rich Rodriguez's son. I still call him dad when I'm out there. I probably should call him Coach Rod, but I still say, hey, dad, what do you think about this? And so I think me and him, we have just kind of have that approach of um, don't try to act like something that you're not. So we're both kind of embrace, be who we are, and embrace that father-son relationship. And it's been really cool to see, especially now. Obviously, my freshman year, I was able to play with him. But as a freshman, I still was kind of didn't really know what college football was like. I was still kind of just a young freshman not knowing what was going on, but now that I have a couple years under my belt, I really do feel like I have more of a control where I can talk to him about things, he can talk to me about things, and it's really been different than it was before. One way to describe it would be a perfectionist. <laughs> I would say passionate. Some people say um, maybe a little intense, uh, but the way I look at it, he's real and authentic, which is what you really want from a coach because when you can tell when coaches are being fake or when coaches really aren't tell, just telling you what you want to hear but the thing with him is he's not going to tell you what you want to hear he's going to tell you what you need to know and so I think the players and, and me especially we appreciate that he is real he is authentic and he is passionate and that passion and energy kind of infects the whole team yeah well it actually has been really fun to see this semester how the offense has changed over the years because like I said, I was with him my freshman year, and it was a lot of the same kind of offense, the same terminology, but he is such an innovator that the playbook has changed, and I'm kind of used to the system I was in at Arizona the past few years, so it's been really cool to see how he has innovated and how he has changed a little bit. But like you said, I am a perfectionist myself. That's probably him rubbing off on me, and uh, I just I like to compete. I like to win, and so I always try to be perfect when I'm out there. Yeah, that's been my advantage my entire career is the mental aspect of the game. Obviously, growing up in it, I've kind of been used to having the football knowledge or the football IQ. And obviously, I'm not the biggest, fastest, or strongest guy out there. And so I had to figure out a way to be out there and succeed. And so I've always wanted to have that mental advantage. And especially being a quarterback, you have to know what everyone's doing all over the field. You have to know what the offensive line, the receivers, the running backs, and then in addition, that next level is understanding the defense, understanding different coverages, different schemes, because whenever it comes down to making the right decision, it doesn't matter how strong your arm is or how fast you are. It matters if you're throwing the ball in the right spot. The thing I would say about him as a father is he's always been very caring and very passionate and he may, might not always be the, hey, I have a whole bunch of time to go do stuff because 
obviously with football, he is very busy. He's a very busy person, but he's taught us the value of hard work and dedication because he doesn't cut any corners. There's no shortcuts. He's taught us that the key to success is just working hard and doing everything the right way because everything matters. There's no such thing as something that is insignificant or you can take a shortcut here. He's taught us the value of hard work and understanding that you have to put in that work if you want to succeed. Yeah, away from the office, my dad, he is intense, but as soon as you get our little puppies with him, he, can't, he completely changes. And the funny thing is my family, we didn't really have dogs growing up, but as soon as we got our first little Pomeranian, Roxy, he just loves that dog. And then a couple years later, we got Rambo, and Rambo is his dog. And he loves that dog. Anytime he gets to see him, he loves to pet him and relax and go to have naps with him. But the funny thing is my freshman year at Arizona, I put a, together a little video where I had some clips of him getting angry in traffic or maybe breaking a bottle, but I intercut it with videos of him swimming with the dogs, taking naps and petting him. And so just that kind of dichotomy between him yelling and getting mad, but then also being super cute and loving with the puppies. That's something that anytime you see it, you're like, that just doesn't quite look right, but that's who he is. And he's always talking about football, but we can talk really about anything. Really, it's, it's sports, whether it's softball, baseball, golf. He just loves competition. He loves seeing college sports, professional sports. But over the years, I would say him and I have kind of developed more of a friendship too, because obviously as a father and son, as you grow older, you can kind of understand more of who they are and who you are. And it's been really nice this semester to have more conversations with him and be, spend more time with him and really develop more of a friendship. I've been trying to work on my golf game. The problem is every fall, once football season starts, I stop golfing and then I start again in the spring and I lose it. By the time I get it going in the summer, then it gets bad again in the fall, but I like golfing. I actually beat my dad sometimes now. He wouldn't like to admit it, but I, he normally beats me, but every once in a while, if I'm playing good, I, I can beat him. Yeah, well, I actually like to say that I'm more of my mom's personality than my dad's personality. My mom and I are kind of both very analytical, and my dad is kind of more impulsive at times. And so my mom and I, we just have conversations, whether it's about the right way to make a ham and cheese sandwich, or we'll just start talking about all the different ways to do it. And uh, my mom and I, we just kind of have more of a similar personality. And she's really just told me a lot about doing the right thing. My mom always talks about just doing the next right thing and being a good person. And that's one of the things that I really love about her. And she's been a huge impact on my life. Well, the thing I would say about Monroe is the city's been very welcoming. All the people here have been very kind. Everyone goes out of your way to ask, how are you doing, introduce themselves. And Monroe really, it is not a huge town, but I've seen there's a lot of people who are rooting for this program. I can feel like we're all pointing in the right direction, and it's been really cool just to have people say, hey, I'm going to be coming out to the games this fall. And so it's been really nice to be feel welcomed and appreciated for football down here. Well, success, obviously the goal is to win a Sun Belt championship and to win as many games as possible, but for me, I think we're really focusing on the culture. And people talk about culture a lot, but really it does make the difference. Obviously, you want to have the biggest, fastest, and strongest team, but the teams that do the right things, the team that has the right culture, they're going to be the ones that are winning games. So this year, we'd love to go to a bowl game, but I think the first thing is establishing that culture, and if we do that right, then good things will come. I would say I go to ULM because I love being the underdog. I'm here to prove myself. A lot of people are here to prove themselves, and that's what we plan to do this fall. And why not have a better chance than going from 0-10 to turning around and having a great season? So I'm embracing that underdog role. I'm ready to prove myself, and I think the whole team is ready to do that. You know, I think, I think the buy-in by the players is probably the thing that's impressed me the most because when you come into a new program and you've you got a new offense, a new defense, new players, you've got all these different things have got to combine together because football, above all sports, is a team, a team sport. You've got to have 11 on the field in offense, 11 on the field defense. So everybody's got to buy in and buy into what we're trying to do offensively, defensively in the kicking game. And these guys have jumped right in. They've all, all have gotten to be where they 
believe what we're doing. They, they're, they're working hard to achieve what we're doing. And I think that's the most important part. We've got so many players from so many different backgrounds, uh, getting them to play as a unit, play as a team. Uh, I think that may be the most important thing that I've seen so far. We're going, we're going to go out there with one thought in mind, and that's playing to help each other be the best team we can be. You know, our, our, our slogan this year, will you fight or will you quit? Because in, in any time you have an endeavor like turning a program around, going from no wins to, to where you can go, it's going to be tough. There's going to be some adversity. Uh, and mainly it's not about everything going perfectly. It's how you react to what doesn't happen so well. Maybe a loss jumps in there. How do you respond to it? How do you respond to a tough day out there on the practice field? And, and every day of your, of your life and every day of your football life for sure, Sure. At some point, you got to ask yourself, um, am I going to fight or am I going to quit? It may be just be too tired to run the next play in practice. It may be too tired to lift that final lift in the weight room. Every single day, we have got to commit to boy, we're going to fight, not quit. Uh, and that doesn't mean just walk off the field or quit a drill and walk off to the sideline. It's where you quit wanting to be the best at what you can be at that very moment in your life. And so we've kind of challenged our players to know, to know that if we're going to be successful as as a team, then individually, we've got to all come to the conclusion that we've got to fight and never quit. Yeah, Mark Stoops has done a great job in his nine years at, at Kentucky. Now they've been to their fifth fifth straight bowl game, and uh, a team has turned that program around. You know, back when I was in the SEC, and, and that was probably a long time ago, uh, Kentucky might have just been another game for us, I think, back in the in the early 90s or mid-90s, where you just kind of figured it would be a W, and that's kind of what it was. But in the SEC now, they aren't. They're challenging every team uh, for a chance to, to, to win the division. To, going to a bowl is, is to a thing they always do, and I think right now, with the people they've got in place, with the additions they got out of the portal, uh, they feel like they can have a very, very special team. So it, this is not one of those games where you think, goodness, we got Kentucky. This is one of those, oh, my gosh, we got Kentucky. Let's go out there and be the best we can be. But this is a, a Mark Stoops has put an incredible staff together, has built a football program. And unlike ULM, where this is the first year of our rebuilding efforts, this is the ninth year or tenth year, maybe, of his rebuilding effort. Uh, and you can tell it because they are very, very good at what they do. Well, I mean, there are keys to a season opener against a, 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 an opponent that you bring in to play you, and there's, a, a, there's an opening game where you're playing as someone else's opponent, and this is one of those games where we're playing a, a Power 5 school at their place for a guarantee. Uh, but, you know, you got to go in there and have a chance to do the right thing. If you're going to win a game like this, something has to happen now. And I have been a part of games where when I was at Akron, we beat Pittsburgh or we beat Northwestern in years that they went to bowls or played for their conference championship. But big things have to happen. We've got to go out there and win a turnover battle. To have any chance, you've got to win the turnover battle. You've got to have at least two more at-bats than the other team. So you've got to pull that out. Now, if you can get a turnover that goes for a score, now that's the way it usually happens when that happens. So I'm not saying that we can't play a great game and, and contend with these people, but I would say with to, to play with Kentucky, and I'm talking about just being in the ball game, we've got to create and win the turnover battle. Don't give up the big play. Uh, and make them make them drive 90 yards, 80 yards every time they're on offense uh, if we're going to have a chance. Because what you want to do is somehow play close, get the game close into the end of the third quarter where it's just whether you're within 10 or within 13 and all of a sudden doubt starts getting created. Gosh, we don't look that good or we're not playing like we should be playing. we got a big SEC school, SEC school next week. And you kind of hope that you're just, just close enough for them to maybe get out of their game. But something like that has to happen. If, if, if they play their best and we play our best, the outcome is probably already determined uh, because of the talent level that they are. But that's not the way football is. And, I, and we're going to try hard to win the, the, the fundamentals game, the turnover game, the field position game.